Holy mackerel. Isn't that just awesome? Can you believe the motion of this thing? I just know this is going to catch fish. In fact, even though Okusul gave this one to me, I've gone out and I've already bought two more because they're on sale here in late October of 2019. Let's do a quick unboxing. I don't normally do these, but there's some things in here you wouldn't anticipate. Obviously, you're getting the lure, and it's got two mustad hooks and two connection points. It's got a propeller in the front, and included are some spare propellers. If your propeller does get gummed up, it just pulls off, and you can put the new one on. It's pretty simple. It also comes with some snap links to attach the lure to your line. Now you have to use a float with this. And then finally, you have the power cable, and it connects to a USB, and you hook the red, the positive, to the one on the top and the negative to the one on the bottom, plug it in, and a red light will glow down here telling you it's charging. It does take four hours to charge. I tested that. So that's what's in the box, and interestingly enough, no instructions came with it. So pay attention to my video. But let's talk about this before I start using it, because the negative of it is it's only good for an hour. So now when you look at this thing, it's good for salt and fresh water. It's got a LED light on the inside, as well as some steel balls that will do the clacking. Now it's late October, as I mentioned. The bait is pretty much gone out of where I fish, so it's going to be pretty sketchy to catch a fish today. So I've got to be very tactical in terms of when I deploy this because of the one hour uh, use time. And that's why I bought a couple more, so that way I can get at least three hours of use on a normal day. So I'm not going to use it here. Uh, there's a better spot that we like on a falling tide about a half mile over to my left, and that's where I'm going to let it uh, do its thing. I'm going to put a little bit of Procure on it. I know you don't normally put Procure on hard baits, but I think that'll just enhance uh, the action and the smell of this thing. Okay, I'm just experimenting with this a little bit before I move over to my good spot. I've got the float that came with it on there, and you can see that as the bait does its motion, it goes down. After seeing the behavior on the water where it pulled the floats underneath, I realized that there had to be a difference between hooking the lure to this connector or that connector. And I'm back here in the lab at the pool to show you what I've discovered. First, let's go ahead and hook it up the way I had it out there on the water. Okay, we popped in the pool. It's on the back connector. And it turns on and you notice that it dives down and goes deep. And in fact, it goes all the way to the bottom of the pool. And the nice thing is that when it stops, you can see the float pulls it back up to the top. So that gives it a little bit of extra uh, action. Now, let me show you what happens when I connect it to the front connector. Okay, let's drop it in. It activates. And there it goes. And you can see that with it attached to the front, it stays shallow. The float does not really go underwater. But we've got a problem. If I just let it sit out there, the line is going to wrap around the float. So I had to come up with a way to prevent it. In the shallow mode, if I put a little bit of tension on the line, no problems at all. So I'm going to try this on braid, but I think the implication here is pretty clear. If you're throwing it out in a pool that's still, you've got to keep a little bit of tension on the line. If you're throwing it in a current, the current is going to keep that tension in the line, whether that's on a river or a tidal current. So I think we're going to be okay. Let's check it out on the braid, and we'll see if we get a thumbs up then. Okay, I put the braid on there, and I noticed a little bit of line twist in my last experiment. So I put a little swivel on there to connect it to the braid, and it's pristine. 
So the lesson here is that you have to actively manage the, uh, the lore. You can't just throw it out there and let it sit unless it's in a current that's going to keep some tension in the line. And I also noticed on the shallow, it tended to work its way back towards me, so I had to pull in a little bit of line as we went. So, knowing that, I think I know how to use this thing, and I think it's going to be a killer. Put a little bit of pro gear on here, and hopefully catch some fish. So when I'm back in the marsh, I'm going to hook it up to this front connection point. And when I try it in the surf, which I want to do, I think I'll hook it up to the back. Because I'd like to have it go up and down in the surf, and hopefully the waves don't disrupt anything. Well, let's go try it in the real world. Oh no! I did a cast, my line caught on something, and snapped. That lure is lost because it's going to hit the water, it's going to sink, and it's going to start moving around. But I came out the next day at low tide and I found it. So we'll be able to check it out. Probably not here kayak fishing, it's the end of the season, but I'll try it in the surf. Happy ending! <laughs>